Today's review, we're going to be having a look at the DC Collectibles DC Essentials figure number eight, Black Manta. DC Essentials is a line of 7-inch action figures based on DC characters with universal appeal, accessible to both longtime collectors and those just starting out, which deliver authentic detail from a company with two decades experience creating high-quality action figures. Taking the tape measure, I was a little silent there for a second, taking the tape measure and measuring off to the top of his dome, Black Manta stands at 7.2 inches in height. And if we switch that over to centimeters, because you know that's what I like to do, switching it to centimeters, that same figure is 18.3 centimeters in height. Bringing in some of the other figures that we've had a look at, here he is next to DC Essentials Flash, putting him next to Brainiac. We just recently looked at Brainiac. Here he is next to Batman. Batman was starting to develop some loose ankles. We'll talk about that in a second as well. Oh boy, we get to talk about loose ankles. <laughs> and here he is next to Man of Steel, speaking of loose ankles. One thing can also be very apparent when looking at all the Essentials lineup is that they all make use of the exact same body. The body does vary more specifically with the hands. The hands may alter here and there, but so far, most, if not all, the figures that we've gotten from Essentials is using the exact same mold. Now, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because I've also been somebody that was a big fan of DC Universe figures, which were notorious for using the exact same mold. Some people have pointed out the fact that there's maybe a little bit of exhaustion so far that we're getting mold after mold of the exact same figure. I think what they probably should have done Maybe if not for the first series, but certainly for the second series, that they probably should have incorporated a figure that didn't use the exact same mold. Just something that was different. Whether it be a female figure, or in the case of, say, a Joker, somebody that would have had a much slimmer proportioned profile. For those who follow Black Manta, you'll probably recognize a lot of these same accessories. A lot of Black Manta figures have also had the exact same separate uh, accessories. It sort of com comes with this two-pronged dagger, which unfortunately, as you could probably guess it, is a little on the thinner plastic. The plastic is brittle on this, so you don't want to be bending or clipping these. It does fit into his hands, and luckily for Black Manta, he does actually have open hands which is not the same that we could have said for, say, the likes of Brainiac, who I believe did have completely closed, shut fists. Um, it, you do have to fit into his hand, but you have to pry the fingers away from themselves to fit this in place. Any little bit of pressure, I can't stress this enough, would break these. If you want to store them instead, the, at least the two-pronged dagger, it fits on the top here. It just slots into place like so. Now, unfortunately, one thing that's going to come from this you'll see that these two points are sticking up. When you are rotating the head, the tubes that are six, are further down on his breathing apparatus may clip inadvertently to the tops of these. So you just want to be careful when you are rotating the head. You can probably hear it right now. That's thin plastic, or at least that's brittle plastic that you're hearing. So you just want to be careful you don't accidentally clip it too much. You could break those right off. The other accessory that he comes with, and actually it's two more accessories, one of which I just dropped. I literally just dropped it. Hold on one second. Yes, like I was saying, he does come with these two swords. Now the swords are a lot easier to put into his hand because it doesn't require you to bend the fingers outward. You can just very easily slide them in between the fingers and the palm, just like so. Gives you some extra ways to protect, not as if Black Manta really needs to protect himself, but some extra swords that you can display with the figure. If you don't want to display him with the swords in his hands, you can flip the figure around and there's these slots on the sides and the swords slide into place. The one thing I don't like though is that the angle in which you have to slide them down. At 
at times I'm feeling when I'm sliding them in that I'm sliding them in the wrong way. And it's probably a good indicator that they do stop if you have them the wrong way. You have to flip the blades the opposite way and then they slide into place like that. You're still going to run into the same problems as the as the dagger in the middle. Be careful when you are removing this back and forth. Even like the tubes, being that they're softer plastic. There's a lot of stuff that could go wrong back here. Just be careful when you are moving stuff. And I think for that reasoning, I don't want to clip this when I'm rotating him or if I'm putting pressure against this. So I think for that reason, I'm for the rest of this review, I'm just going to slide these out. And I'm going to also take this out as well, just in case. Better to be safe than sorry, as I always like to say. So let's have a look at Black Manta. Now, I have to say, and I'm sort of of multiple opinions when it comes to this, kind of opposing opinions. On the one end, I love this figure, but of course it does come with the fact, it comes with the price that he is using the exact same mold as all the other figures. But... I was also a big fan of DC Universe figures, which does the exact same thing at Nausea. So really, I can't be overly critical for the fact that we've really gotten the same mold, mold and mold and mold again and again and again. Slightly departing, departuring itself from the rest of the other figures, however, though, is that Black Manta has nice shiny black plastic. Liking that quite a bit. It somehow also allows all these the musculature in his torso and his legs seems to stand out a lot more. So if you compare it to, say, for example, Flash, it's really the exact same mold, but somehow using shiny black plastic, it pops in a way that I find it didn't pop over here with Flash. I don't know, it's just something I've noticed. But it is the exact same mold. There's nothing different except for changing out the hands. That's one thing that Black Manta does possess that say Flash didn't have, Flash had the flat hand, for example. So you're really gonna be getting black to black, nothing else. But if you're no stranger to Black Manta, that's pretty much on par with what you would expect, a figure that's all dressed in black. He does get a few little extra mileage points because he does have, say for example, silver there on the one gauntlet, while the other hand is completely omitted of that. Like the head sculpt quite a bit. I don't know why this bothers me so much, but I don't like that the neck here is black. Part of me feels as if it should be the same color as the collar and should be the same col color as the very large helmet that he sports on top of his neck. I feel like this color should have been the same. Having the black in between breaks this up in a way that I don't really care for in all honesty. But the dome is very, very uh, Black Manta. And I like that the new upcoming Aquaman movie, oh, let it be good, let it be good, let it be good. I like that Black Manta stays pretty true to his comic roots, at least from a design standpoint. They've up upgraded the costume, but it's pretty close to what we would normally convey, can think of when we, uh, when we think of Black Manta. So there's really not like a whole lot to showcase here. I mean, figure-wise, black to black, black on the neck all the way down to the ankles, doesn't really have a whole lot to showcase. But like I said, I do like the helmet quite a bit. The helmet does feel like it's a little on the hollow side. Let's see if I can actually pop. No, I'm not going to do that just in case I pop the hoses off. I feel as if the inside that helmet is completely hollow. Because if you, if you were to move the helmet like I'm moving the helmet right now, it feels like this is hollow. Not that that's a big deal breaker at all. The eyes are good. I mean, they're painted in red. They haven't given it any honeycomb effect. They haven't given a darker coloring. That would have been nice if they had darkened this area around it and made the center area here a little bit on the lighter shade of red. Instead, they've just sort of given it one color of burgundy across, and that sadly is it. A little bit of burgundy also, or dark crimson red. Oh, I like that color a lot more. Makes its way also into his collar. Spin the figure around. And again, you've got his backpack here with some softer rubbery plastic hoses connecting this to the top. Everything is here silver. Could it really have afforded some additional wash to it just to bring out some of that so it just isn't all one color? Of course. Of course. Um, this I could easily have left off, I mean, from additional paint. 
But I feel as if anything, they should have added some additional dark silver here, just so it wasn't just one color. It almost looks unfinished looking at the figure. Like the eyes look like this is the starting point, the first step of painting, maybe perhaps to a three-step paint process. They just have left off the other steps. Adding a little bit of dark red, like I said, could have gone a long way, just so it didn't look so, not lifeless, but it definitely looks unfinished. Uh, Posability on this guy, his head rotates. Normally, I would say all the way around, but this is not something that you really want to entertain because you're going to probably, if not most definitely, rip those tubes out. So the head's going to rotate there, and the head's going to rotate there. And it hinges slightly up to about there, and slightly down. More down than really up. Um, he has the upper torso crunch, the exact same as all the other figures. This one just happens to be a little bit more stiffer, but it does still have the upper torso crunch. And you can rotate the figure's waist all the way around. The arms hinge out. The arms also rotate. Has a swivel all the way on the bicep. And a double hinge on the elbow. Let me just get that double hinge going so you guys can see I'm not a liar. There is one hinge. Let me do it on the other elbow here. There we go. There's one hinge, and there's two hinges. There goes your double hinged elbow. Rotation on the wrist, hands hinge back and forth. You get to the legs, which just make use of a ball joint. There's the ball joint on the interior, one there and one there. Swivel on the top, cut of the thigh, a little loose on my figure, probably not loose on your figure. Double hinge on the knee, boot rotates all the way around, and of course, one can't overlook the loose ankles. It's not bad on my Black Manta, but I can feel like it's the starting point, what will be starting to get loose. Like this ankle is a lot looser than this ankle. You can rotate the ankles all the way around and they hinge up and down, but I don't know. I don't want to sound I don't want to sound like a broken record. And I know I sound like a broken record for saying it all the time in these reviews, but I feel like I have to point out the positives and the negatives of these figures. The positives are pretty obvious. Great sculpts. Consistently across the board. And the one that I was the most critical about was the one I liked was Superman. Superman, Superman I've never really liked a lot of Superman figures. I liked the Superman. So positives, the essential line succeeds with good sculpts. And paint, for the most part, is pretty good. If you can overlook for the fact that the molds are the exact same, Consistently, the figures are good. And I want to write that down. I want, to, I want to sign my name to the fact that I think the figure line is good from a design standpoint. When you get to the execution, though, of the ankles, I think is where this line suffers. And it's sad to say that because I like this line and I want to see future figures come from it. But I feel like a lot of collectors are starting to see the shortcomings of these really loose ankles as a deterrent for why they don't want to pick up the figures. And I completely agree. These ankles need to be fixed. And I don't think DC collectibles will likely want to fix them because, of course, they've now got the existing mold that they can make use of for the countless different figures that they want to churn out. The interesting test will be the figures that don't use this mold. When we start getting female figures and when we start getting figures that don't utilize a muscular mold like a Joker, it will be interesting to see if they do something different with the ankles. I could only hope. Let me just also sign off on something as well. Black Manta, it's very hard to make a bad figure of him. He sort of falls within that same category as Mysterio, even though Mysterio has had some bad figures. If you have a big, giant, ridiculous dome on your head, it's impossible, or mostly it's impossible, to come up with a bad figure. So let me, very reassure, let me reassure you, at least, in final looks by telling you this Black Manta is a nice-looking figure. Sure, he makes use of the exact same mold as all the other Essentials figures that we've looked at thus far, and if that is not something that's going to give you mold exhaustion, then I would say that this figure is worth picking up. Black Manta has always been one of my own personal favorite figures, so again, I might be a little bit biased for saying this. I really like this figure a lot. Its only shortcomings are unfortunately the same shortcomings that plague this line, and that's really loose ankles. In fact, looking at him in final looks, 
I just want to tell you this is about the fourth time I've shot this last bit of the video. His ankles have given way and unfortunately I painfully have to admit that the ankles on one of his legs, I think it's on the it's on the left leg. I'm looking at it, it's, it's the left leg. The left leg's ankle has gotten really loose to the point where the figure's starting to already give me problems standing up. And I just want to stress this, I've only had this figure out of the package for a day. If you can overlook that, or certainly don't mind for the fact that you're probably going to have to lean these figures against something, or you're going to have to find an at-home quick fix remedy to stiffen up the joint in the ankle, I think this figure is worth picking up if you really like Black Manta. And consistently across the board, I think all these figures are good prime examples of whatever character the figure is based from. If you like Flash, the DC Essentials Flash is probably one of the best that you're going to get. The same with the Superman. You just really have to do a little bit of finessing on the ankles so the figures will stand over the test of time. And this is something, again, I hope that DC Collectibles acknowledges and is willing to fix on future figures. If they're willing to fix the ankles, then there's a strong potential with this line being the next DC Universe lineup, which just so happens also to make use of the exact same molds. Today, though, we were having a look at the DC Collectibles DC Essentials Black Manta figure, which I quite like, omitting the fact that he has the already the starting points of loose ankles. That makes me so sad. As sad as a plastic figure not standing properly can make an upset 40-year-old gentleman. But either way, uh, really liking this figure quite a bit. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC Essentials figures, don't worry, there's a playlist designated just for that. And if you haven't already had a chance to subscribe to this channel, what are you waiting for? Make sure as well, while you're at it, swing on over to the homepage, check out the videos section tab, and see if there's anything that you may have missed along the way. I may have very well posted a new video previous to this one, maybe yesterday. And when I did that, I probably posted about two or three videos, because that seems consistent with what I'm normally doing every single day two to three videos it's crazy but still i push forward best way to make sure that you haven't missed out on any of those videos is checking out the home page and seeing the videos section to see if there's anything you may have missed along the way we're going to have a look at some more dc essentials figures coming up i guess if i'm doing my calculations correctly i think the only one we haven't had a look at yet is aquaman pending of course the next wave of figures hitting toy store shelves Either way, guys, as always, thanks for watching. As you always do, let me know down below. Let's weigh in on what you think of the Essentials lineup so far. Do you like it? Have you picked up any? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.